Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on how to calculate Cohen's D using Microsoft Excel. Now, Cohen's D is a measure of effect size and statistics. And what commonly happens is we'll run a test uh, like an independent samples t-test using SPSS and we'll need to calculate Cohen's D. So we can use Excel to do that. And I'm going to walk you through each step of how this particular worksheet, this Excel worksheet, uh, is constructed. You can see uh, within the uh, window I have the function bar at the top. So I'm going to show you what the functions look like uh, that I've put into this worksheet. So let's first start with the data. Uh, this is output which would be typical from uh, SPSS for an independent samples t-test. And in this example, let's say we have a treatment and a control. And let's assume the treatment is for participants who suffer from depressive symptoms. And that they're being assessed with an instrument where a lower score uh, means fewer depressive symptoms. So as you can see, we have 45 participants in the treatment group, 50 in the control. A mean score on this instrument that measures depressive symptoms of 78.9 for the treatment group and 81.6 for the control and a standard deviation of 3.4 for the treatment group and 3.9 for the control group. So this is all the information we need to calculate Cohen's D. So let's take a look at the formula over here to the right uh, for Cohen's D. So Cohen's D is equal to the mean difference divided by what's called the pooled standard deviation. And the formula for the pooled standard deviation is down here. Now, I know it may look a little complex, but I'm going to walk through every stage of how I calculated uh, the numerator in the Cohen's D formula and the denominator, which is the pooled standard deviation. So first, let's take a look at the numerator. Uh, it's relatively easy to calculate as compared to the denominator. It is the mean difference. So you can see in the formula up top, uh, C3 minus C4, which is the mean score of the treatment group minus the mean score of the control group. It's fairly straightforward. It's negative 2.7. So now let's look at the denominator. And I'm going to break this down into the different steps. We'll look at the first number in the numerator. This is the, the numerator of the denominator. The second number in the numerator of the denominator. The denominator in the denominator for a pooled standard deviation. And then, of course, the pooled standard deviation. So first, we'll look at the first number in the numerator. And you can see from the function up top, it is the sample size for the treatment group, minus 1, multiplied by the standard deviation squared, which of course is consistent with the formula. Similarly, if we look at the second number in the numerator, we look at that formula. It is the sample size for the control group, minus 1, multiplied by the standard deviation squared. And then we'll take a look at the denominator of the denominator for the Cohen's D uh, formula. And you can see it's fairly straightforward. It is the sample size for the treatment group plus the sample size for the control group minus 2. Now just a note here, uh, depending on the statistical consultant, I've seen individuals who use the same denominator without the minus 2. I choose to use it with the minus 2. And then let's look at the pooled standard deviation. The formula is the square root of the first number in the numerator plus the second divided by the denominator. 
So now we have all the information we need to calculate Cohen's D. And you can see that Cohen's D, as consistent with the formula here, is the numerator divided by the denominator. Now you might be wondering what these other functions are. Well, I've rounded it to two places. That's what the round function's for. And ABS is absolute value. So we have a Cohen's D of 0.74. Now there are many different interpretations for uh, determining what a Cohen's D value means for a particular experiment. Uh, you can find many different uh, cutoff values. Uh, this is one that uh, I use as a, a general reference uh, for effect size for Cohen's D. A small effect size be around 0.2, a medium uh, 0.5, and a large 0.8. But again, there's many different tables available, and it really depends on how your experiment set up and, and uh, the measure and what you're using uh, the data, the uh, results for. So using this particular example, though, this uh, grid, uh, 0.74 would be uh, almost a large effect size. Right? I mean, it's just about 0.8, but not quite. So we'd say it's, it's almost a large effect size. And again, depending on the nature of the experiment, uh, you may consider uh, this important, or you may not. I hope this tutorial on how to calculate Cohen's D was helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me, and I will be happy to assist you.